Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you're here. It's time for a new quarterly card making challenge, Kendra's card challenge number eight. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you can create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six inch by six inch pattern paper with hardly any scraps. For this challenge, you can create 17 A2 size cards. It's like a one sheet wonder times six. Plus, you can have a chance to win lots of crafty goodies by sharing your creations throughout the quarter. Now, this challenge runs from October 1st to December 31st of 2022, and there are 13 company prize sponsors this quarter with over $400 worth of prizes that will be given away throughout the duration of this challenge. Now, I'll share details on the prizes and how to enter the challenge here in just a bit. Now to briefly explain the challenge, you would use the cutting templates and the card sketches that are provided in this free PDF printable that's available for download on my website at cardsbykindred.com. I will have all the links detailed below in the description box, but basically you'll pick out six coordinating pattern papers and assign them to each of the color coded papers A through F. This can be either six inch by six inch paper or 12 inch by 12 inch paper that's cut down to six by six. And then you'll cut the papers using the cutting templates and sort the pieces for each of the 17 card sketches. Now you'll also need some matching colored cardstock for the layers and card bases. And then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps, dies, ephemera, or embellishments that you'd like following these sketches. Now this challenge is not company specific, which means you can use whatever supplies that you have in your stash. And it's a great way to use up those paper pads. So if you use a paper pad that has 24 sheets, that means you can make 68 coordinating cards, which is pretty awesome. The first two cutting templates here are the orange and green that are labeled as paper A and B. All of the measurements are listed for each piece and there are scissors on each template to show which part of the paper needs to be cut first. There's circled numbers on each piece which indicates which card sketch that that piece goes with. And there's also arrows on each piece to show the direction of how it will be placed on each of the card sketches. You'll notice that on some of these papers, not all of the arrows go the same direction. So for this particular challenge, you'll want to use patterns that are non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. But if you do have a directional pattern, you'll want to use it for papers B and F. Here are the card sketches. There's a total of 17 cards for this challenge. And this page shows the first eight sketches. Now the next sheet shows sketches nine through 14. The pieces from sketch nine and 10 will both create split front cards. And many of the sketches are flexible and allow you to use whatever shape or embellishments you'd like rather than the shapes that are shown on the sketch. And then for sketches 13 and 14, you'll create two starburst cards. Then the last page shows sketches 15 through 17. And there's also instructions on the bottom of the last page with some helpful hints like using larger mats to cut out smaller mats that will be hidden behind the pattern paper, and also rotating or flipping the card sketches to make it work for what you have. I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Now I'll show you the papers that I have assigned for each of the cutting templates. I'm using the Floral Pumpkin Paper Pad by Pink and Main, which is a part of their September of 2022 Crafty Courtyard Kit. And these are the six sheets of pattern paper that I have assigned to each of the cutting templates. Now remember, you can use 12 by 12 paper and just cut them down to six by six to make this work. But I'm using the polka dot pattern for paper A, and then this plaid pattern here for paper B, and then the next two papers are for C and D. And then the last two papers, of course, are for papers E and F but the back sides of these papers are all of these checkered patterns and they're in different fall colors. So I know that if the patterns on this side don't work, I know that the patterns on the other side will definitely coordinate together. So I can flip the papers over and pair these up, up with the different card sketches. So of course, card sketch one shows a piece from pattern A where sketch two adds in a piece from paper C Sketch three also uses papers A and C together. And sketch four combines papers A and B. Sketch five combines B and F. Sketch six combines B and C. Sketch seven, papers A and B. And then sketch eight uses papers C, D, and E, which I'll use 
the checkered patterns on the back side of the papers for those. And I'll also use the checkered patterns for sketches 9 and 10 for these two split front cards. And then sketch 11 uses papers A and D. Sketch 12 uses C, D, and E. And then for sketches 13 and 14, those use papers E and F for those starburst cards. And I'll definitely be using the checkered patterns that are on the back side for both of those cards. And then finally, uh, sketch 15 uses a small strip from paper F along with a big panel from paper E. And sketch 16 uses paper C and D. And then sketch 17 has a larger strip from paper F and a few small pieces from papers E and F for the little banners. Now remember, you don't have to follow the sketch exactly. It's just the starting point to get you going. You can change it up if you need to to make it work with the supplies that you have. Now I'll show you the best way for cutting the papers using the templates. This is paper A, but before you get started, you'll want to have something to put the paper pieces in once you cut them up so that that will help you keep everything organized. And I like to use cellophane sleeves that are numbered, but envelopes would also work. But look for the scissors on the cutting template. This indicates where you cut first. Now, because it doesn't really matter which way my pattern is facing for this particular piece of paper, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this at four and a quarter inches. Let me scoot this down so you can see what I'm doing. So this is my bottom piece here. Now I'm going to cut this right here at four and a quarter inches. And that will leave us with a one and three quarter inch by one and three quarter inch square for sketch seven. And then this piece, we're going to turn it and cut it at one and a quarter inches. And this is for sketch four. And then this half inch piece, you'll want to cut to measure four inches for sketch two. The quarter inch piece will be scraps. Now for the top part, we're going to cut this at four and a quarter inches. So now we have a four and a quarter inch square, which will be for sketch one. And for this last piece, we're going to cut off a quarter of an inch first. So measure it at four inches. And then this little piece is for sketch seven. And then these rectangle pieces should measure a half, a half, and then three quarter inches. So I'm measuring at a half of an inch, and then again at a half an inch, and then the piece that's left should be three quarter inches. And these are for sketches seven, three, and 11. And so here are all the cuts for paper A. And then I'm going to sort these into the different cellophane sleeves by number. Now for the second sheet of paper, paper B, I'm going to go ahead and cut where the scissors indicate at four inches. And then I will turn this piece and cut it at five and a quarter inches. And these two pieces are for sketches four and six. And then with this rectangle strip, you'll turn and cut it at four and a quarter inches. And then you'll cut the top part into one inch strips, and these will be for sketch five. And then the bottom piece, we will cut into a one and three quarter inch square for sketch seven. And that little piece that you cut off will be an alternative piece that you can use for sketch seven. So this is how paper B should look when cut, and you can sort the pieces into the appropriate sketch piles. Now let's cut paper C. And because sketch eight calls for papers C, D, and E, and they have that diagonal cut, you want them to coordinate and match well. It's really important that you decide what papers you want to use for this sketch before you cut it, because when you cut these papers, the patterns you want to use need to be facing up so that you cut it the correct way. Your first cut for paper C is at three and a quarter inches. So then 
You will turn this piece and cut off the bottom, which should measure four and three quarter inches. And then for the other side, you'll cut one inch off of the top. And then you'll need to have a two and three quarter inch square. So you'll cut it at two and three quarter inches. And then for these last two pieces, one piece should measure one inch, and then the bottom piece should measure one and a quarter inch. And so the larger piece will be for sketch 12. And then you're going to take this one inch piece that has the diagonal cut across it for sketch 8. You'll need to make sure that you cut the diagonal from top left to bottom right. So you want to make sure that the corners of the piece are lined up correctly in your paper trimmer. Each of the quarters need to line up where your blade is going to go. So if you have a paper trimmer like this, you can make sure that it's in the groove and you want to make sure you hold it in place. And this is how your paper C should look whenever it's cut. So now we're going to cut paper D. This is the back side and the pattern I want to use for card sketch 8. So I'm going to cut it with this side facing up since the way I cut the diagonal pieces will matter. And remember that on sketches 9 and 10 you'll be making split front cards. So also keep that in mind when cutting paper D. If the pattern you want to use is not facing up, you'll have to flip the card sketch a different way, which isn't a problem at all. In fact, you'll see that's what I had to do on my card samples that I'll show you here shortly. But your first cut will be at 4 inches. And then you'll turn the big piece and cut this at three quarter inches to cut the bottom piece off, which will be for card sketch 11. We'll cut those diagonal pieces here in just a bit. But now let's take the rectangle piece on the right and take care of these cuts first. So we'll turn it on the long side and cut this at two and three quarter inches. And then you'll turn again and cut these into one inch strips. One will be for sketch 12 and the other piece is for sketch 8. So now we're going to take this and cut it at a diagonal just like we did for paper C. Again, you want to line up the corners of the paper on the cut line of your paper trimmer. And what you should be left with is this two by three and one quarter inch piece for sketch 16. So this is what paper D should look like with the cuts made so far, but we still have to cut the diagonal pieces for the split front card sketches nine and 10. So we're going to take this four by five and a quarter inch piece and we're going to measure from the top on the longest side and measure to three quarter inches down and we're going to mark it with a pencil and I'm using my T ruler but you can use your paper trimmer also and then on the other side you'll measure and mark at three and three quarter inches and then along the bottom you're going to measure over from the left two and a half inches and you'll mark this with your pencil and then once you have all of your marks you're going to place this in your paper trimmer and you're going to find the three quarter inch mark and you're going to line that up into the the cutting line with the mark that we made at two, or I'm sorry, three and three quarter inches. And then you will cut this, make sure you hold it in place, and then you'll have your top piece. And now you'll keep the same corner at the top, the one at the three quarter inches, and you'll line it up with the other mark that we made at two and a half inches. So make sure it's lined up good, and you'll cut it, and then once you do this, you'll have your three pieces that you'll need for the split front cards. You'll just have two pieces for one of the card sketches and then one piece for the other. And we'll do similar cuts for our Starburst cards on papers E and F, which I'll show you here in just a moment. So now for paper E. Our scissors indicate the first cut, which is to take off the half inch strip off the bottom. And I will not be using this light pattern here, but I'll definitely want to use the yellow checkered pattern. And because I'm using all of the checkered patterns for card sketch eight, again, I want to make sure that this is the side facing upward when cutting so that the diagonals will be cut the right way. So first we'll cut at five and a half inches to cut off the bottom piece. And then we'll turn that strip and cut it at five inches, which will be for sketches 15 and 17. Then you'll want to make sure that you turn the paper on the six inch side and cut off one inch. 
and then you'll turn the strip and cut it at two and three quarter inches and one piece will be for sketch 12 and for the other we're going to do the exact same thing at the diagonal that we did already for previous papers for card sketch 8. Now for the big piece it should measure five inches on one side and five and a half on the other. So turn the paper so that the five and a half inch side is where you'll be making your next cut and we're going to cut it at three and three quarter inches. So this piece once it's cut should measure three and three quarter inches by five and this is where we're going to have our starburst pattern which we'll cut here shortly. But the bottom piece is for sketch 15 and so now we're going to take the big piece and use the ruler to make our marks along the long edge and we're going to measure from the the edge we're going to measure one and a half inches and mark it with a pencil and from that mark you're going to measure over two inches and then you're going to turn the paper and measure along the short edge over one inch from the left and mark that and then from that mark you're going to measure over one and a half inches and then from that mark to the corner should measure one and a quarter inches so once you have all the marks you'll want to put the bottom corner of the paper in the groove of your cutting blade or on your paper trimmer along the cut line that you're going to use whichever type of trimmer you have and then you'll line up the first mark you made to make the first diagonal cut you want to keep the same corner in the cut line at the bottom and then shift it to the left to find that next mark and line that up to make your next cut. And then you'll do this again. You'll shift it to the left to line up the next mark. And then you'll do this one more time. Shift it to the left to make that last cut. And once you do that, you should have a starburst looking pattern. And of course, we're going to do this exact same thing on paper F with this section of the paper. So this is what paper E should look like once you have all of your cuts. And now let's move on to paper F. Again, the scissors indicate that your first cut will be at one and three quarter inches. And so we'll go ahead and cut this bottom piece off. And then you'll take that strip and turn it and cut it at five and a half inches. And these will both be for sketch 17. And then the large piece on the six inch side, you'll cut off the one inch piece from the side, which will be for card sketch five. And so I just measured on the six inch side at five inches to make that cut. And then you'll turn that piece and cut off the half inch strip so when you measure your piece it should be three and three quarter inches by five inches just like for paper e so now i'll show you how to make the marks you need for the starburst cards using a paper trimmer if you happen to have one like this you'll just measure over at one and a half inches and put your mark where the groove is and then from that mark you'll measure over two inches and make your mark again and then from that mark to the edge should measure one and a half inches. And then you'll turn the piece and from the edge you'll measure and mark at one inch. And then from that mark you'll measure at one and a half inches. And then of course from that mark to the edge should be one and a quarter inches. So that's how you do it without having a ruler. But again you will line up the bottom left corner, the edge, and cut at each of the marks at a diagonal same as before. Just make sure you keep the bottom left corner in the groove so that the pieces will line up with the other paper that you cut when you go to pair them up together for sketches 13 and 14. I know these diagonal cuts are a little more challenging than what I've had in the past, but I really love the way the split front and the starburst cards turn out. And I hope you do too. I figured we'd step it up a notch since this is a challenge after all. But this is what paper F should look like when it's all cut up. Once you have all the papers cut and sorted out by sketch number, you'll want to take your matching colored cardstock and cut the mats for any card sketches that call for layers and also create your card bases. Then you can decide how you want to decorate them. 
For this first set of cards that I made with the challenge, I used another fall themed paper pad from Pink and Main called Pumpkin Season. And because I live in Florida and it's usually hot all the time, I'm definitely welcoming the cooler weather. So I was in the mood to make a bunch of fall themed cards. But these are the six papers I selected for each of the cutting templates. I love these fall colors and these polka dot patterns. And I selected these because I know that no matter which patterns I pair together, the dots will coordinate. But these are double-sided papers, so of course I use the patterns on the other side for a lot of my cards. And since the pumpkins are directional, I assign this to paper B so that they will face the right way on the card. And the back side for paper C has that plaid pattern, and then paper D has the stripes. And then for paper E, the back side has this beautiful floral pattern. And then um, for paper F there's this leaf pattern and because the leaf pattern is kind of a directional pattern too i made sure to assign that to paper f since all of the arrows on the cutting templates are facing the same way now i won't show the process of me cutting the papers or putting the cards together in this video but i will share the finished cards that I, that i created when i was putting this challenge together i will be sharing the card making process for these cards in future videos so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss it so as I show each of the cards, I'm placing the card sketches in the top right hand corner. And while I show the cards, I'll explain how to enter the challenge. As mentioned before, you can find the free printable on my website at cardsbykindra.com. And it's also linked below in the description box. The printable includes QR codes that you can scan, which will take you directly to my Facebook group that's called Kendra's Card Challenges. And that's also linked down below. This is where you will upload your photo of all 17 cards into the KCC8 official entry photo album to enter the challenge. There are also separate albums for each card sketch that you can share a photo of each card individually. Now this isn't a requirement to be entered to win, posting them separately, but it's just so that we can all see the cards up close a little better. You can officially enter the challenge up to three times, but only once per month throughout the quarter. But please feel free to share all of your creations in the Facebook group if you decide to do more. Now, if you're not on Facebook, you can also upload your photo using the form linked on my website to officially enter the challenge. You can also upload your creations to social media using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 8 so that others can see your creations and be inspired. I also wanted to mention that there will be a big giveaway video hop on October 2nd where 15 of my crafty friends will be sharing cards that were made with this challenge and each of the sketches will be highlighted. I hope you'll hop along with us. Now, if you're watching this after October 2nd, you can search the hashtag KCC8 giveaway hop in YouTube to find these videos, but the hop will run through October 9th, so you have one week to enter. So if you missed this, it's still awesome to check out these videos to see how each person interpreted the sketches. We'll break down the card making process for each one. Now, I also want to mention my membership program where you can receive additional perks and benefits depending on the tier that you choose, starting at just $5 a month. Patron benefits include a handmade card made by me each month, access to a printer-friendly version of the current challenge PDF file, plus a shout out on all of my challenge videos. Additionally, you can get early access to my card challenges, access to archive challenges, and bonus free printables each month as an all-access patron. Now, as a VIP patron, you can get everything already mentioned, plus a card making kit and a live crafty card making session through Zoom each quarter. For more information on how to become a member, please visit patreon.com forward slash Kendra's card challenges. I'll have this link below in the description box also. By becoming a member, you help to keep my quarterly card making challenges free each quarter by helping to offset the expenses incurred with shipping the prizes and the time spent in creating all of the printables. Now, I want to thank my current channel member patrons shown here. I really appreciate your generosity and support. If you're not a member, I hope you'll check it out and consider joining. I'd really love to continue offering these challenges to everyone because I really love seeing all the wonderful creations each quarter. Now let's talk about the amazing prizes you can win. We have 13 company prize sponsors this quarter. The sponsors for this challenge are Colorado Craft Company, Gina K Designs, Cat Scrappiness, Not Too Shabby Shop, Pink and Main, Pretty Pink Posh, Prickly Pear Stamps, Scrappy Tails Crafts, Sweet November Stamps, 
This calls for confetti, TLC designs, waffle flower stamps, and whimsy stamps. You can see the full list of prizes available on my website. I really hope you'll join us on challenge number eight and also share your creations on Facebook, Instagram, and or YouTube. As I've done in the past, if you have a YouTube channel and you share your video of your creations on your YouTube channel using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 8, you'll get two entries into the contest rather than just one. And you have until December 31st of 2022 to create your cards and get them posted to the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group or uploaded to the forum. And if you think you might give this challenge to try leave me a comment i'd also love it if you'd give this video a thumbs up and share this challenge with any of your crafty friends who might enjoy it i appreciate you watching all the way to the end of this video i can't wait to see what you create and i hope to see you again soon have a wonderful day